today's session we will be discussing about electrocardiography or the ECGs. So this session is divided into multiple subsections. So initially we will be going to discuss about the conduction system of the heart followed by we will go on to the technical aspects of the ECGs and then we will discuss the medical relevance of ECGs. So in the first session basically we will be discussing with the conduction system of the heart. Now why is it important? Because without knowing the conduction system of the heart we will not be able to understand how these ECG waves are going to be formed. So that is why we are going to discuss the physiology of the conduction system of the heart. At the end of this session we are going to achieve the following learning objectives. The first one we are going to understand the conduction system of the heart. How are these waves going to be formed and why these waves are formed. And then we will be understanding how these waves propagate and how they produce the waves on the ECG. So starting with the conduction system of the heart, we know that the heart is controlled by the autonomic nervous system, predominantly by the vagus, that is the parasympathetic section that is going to control it. But along with that, the heart has its own intrinsic regulating system and that is what we call it as the conduction system of the heart. Now this conduction system of the heart is formed by specialized cells and the various electrolytes like sodium, potassium, calcium entering the cell and exiting the cell produces the various voltages and that gets recorded. So this is the intrinsic conduction system of the heart which generates the action potentials within the cardiac tissue. So what is this conduction system of the heart made up of? So this is the list of the various conduction pathways of the heart. The most important being the sinoatrial node that is the pacemaker of the heart followed by the internodal pathways. We have the three internodal pathways which connect the SA node to the AV node. Next we have the AV node, the atrioventricular node followed by the bundle of Hess from where the right bundle and the left bundle arise. The left bundle further divides into the posterior fascicle and anterior fascicle and lastly you have the Purkinje system which innervates the muscle of the left ventricle and that produces the various impulses. So this is the electrical conduction system again so SA node followed by the internodal pathways going on to the AV node from where we have the bundle of Hess. Then you have the right bundle, the left bundle which divides into the anterior and posterior fascicle and finally we have the Purkinje system. So the impulse starts from the SA node that is the pacemaker of the heart from where the impulse transmits to the atria. Both the atria contract that is through the internodal pathways. The impulse then reaches the AV node. So AV node junction. So there is a delay that happens. This is important because the atria and the ventricle should contract different times. If both of them contract the heart, the blood supply to the heart will not occur. So the atria has to contract when the ventricle is relaxed. So this is produced by the AV node from where the impulse travels through the bundle and that stimulates the ventricular septum that which gets depolarized. Then the impulse travels to the right bundle, then the left bundle and finally through the Purkinje system the entire muscle of the ventricle gets depolarized. So I told you SA node is the pacemaker of the heart. This is the most important part of the conduction system of the heart. Now why is this the pacemaker of the heart? Just before that let us know where it is located. It is located at the junction of the right atrial appendage with the superior vena cava. So that is where it is located. Now this has the highest intrinsic rate of impulse generation. So intrinsic rate of impulse generation is highest with the SA node compared to any other portion of the heart. That is why it is the pacemaker of the heart. It is important to know the blood supply, the arterial supply to the SA node. In 55% of the individuals it is the right coronary artery and in 45% of the individuals it is the left circumflex artery. Why do you have to know about this? Because in ischemic heart disease if these vessels get blocked so you can have the SA node also being affected so the heart rate might drop. So this is what I was discussing the rate of impulse generation is highest for the SA node. 70 to 80 per minute is the rate of impulse generation of SA node. So that is why that is the pacemaker. So the normal heart rate what we say is 60 to 100 and that is why SA node is the pacemaker. So supposedly the SA node is not functioning. The next part of the conduction system that the AV node will take over. Remember the heart rate for the AV node is 40 to 60. That means if the AV node is the pacemaker of the heart, the maximum heart rate that could be achieved is 60. If the bundle of the His is taking the pacemaker of the heart, the maximum heart rate that could be achieved is 40. And if all three of them are not going to take function, 
then the Purkinje system would take the action. That means the ventricle would beat on its own. Please remember, if the Purkinje system is going to take the action, the maximum heart rate that could be achieved is 24 per minute.